Hello and welcome to this review of my Unicomp Model M. This keyboard was a donation and I'm quite happy with it because I've been wanting to do a review on one of these for a while now and I've had loads of requests for this review. There are a lot of rumours, myths and misunderstandings about this keyboard so to clear up all the confusion I'm going to give you all some background history first. The Model M was first made by IBM as a cheaper replacement of their earlier Model F. They first came out in 1985 and are basically responsible for the layout on modern keyboards. It's arguably the most famous and influential keyboard of all time. The design changed quite a lot over time. Originally they were made by IBM and had very thick cobalt plated back plates which had a sort of rainbow look to them which looks gorgeous. Later models switched to matte steel which got thinner and thinner over time reducing the weight and rigidity of the keyboard. The badges also changed. Originally they were square and made out of metal and then they became grey and oval and made out of plastic and the last ones were blue and oval. In 1991 IBM detached part of their manufacturing business, most notably their printer division, but also the division that made their keyboards to a company they formed in a buyout named Lexmark after Lexington, Kentucky where they were headquartered. Lexmark kept making the Model M for IBM under license until 1996 when the venture ended and production was focused on IBM UK in Granik and Maxi Switch in Mexico. Some Lexmark employees however decided to buy the tooling Lexmark had used to make the keyboards and they started the business of their own forming Unicomp still in Lexington, Kentucky. They kept making the last model Lexmark made, which is part number 42H1292, and subsequently introduced a slightly smaller and lighter version, as well as updating the design for modern computers, and offering a few more case and keycap options. Many people believe that Unicomp makes Model M clones, but by now it should hopefully be clear that that's not the case. Unicomp M's are genuine Model M's made by the same people and using the same tooling as the old Model M's, they still use buckling springs, have metal plates, etc. It's a real Model M, just a little bit changed over the years. Unfortunately for it, I have what's possibly this keyboard's absolute worst nightmare, a 1985 first generation IBM made Model M. This is one of the earliest M's ever made, so old that it has parts in common with a known prototype, including a controller from 1984 that was originally used on terminal computers, repurposed to fit an M. As far as old Model M's go, it doesn't get older than this, so if anything has changed over the years, it'll show. Also, I've got one made by IBM UK in 1996, the same year Unicomp was formed, so this is a very young counterexample. Of course, with all the thinning of materials going on over the years, these two keyboards have a quite different construction. So, let's weigh them, shall we? So, this one weighs... About 1.7 kilos, a hefty and very respectable weight. And now let's try the old one. That's a little over 2.4 kilos, over 600 grams more. The difference in weight is immediately obvious when you hold the keyboards, it's unmistakable. The difference is due to the thickness of the materials used, which are thinner on the Unicomp than on the IBMs. Here I'll show you by knocking on the keyboard. The Unicomp definitely sounds a lot louder and hollower. Note that most IBM made Model M's are not as heavy as this one though. The early silver badge models typically weigh about 2.2 kilos as far as I know, and the late oval badge ones, including the 1996 one, weighed about two kilos. As a result of the thinner materials, the case flexes a little bit, as you can see. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's definitely noticeable, and it makes a lot of creaking noises. The IBM, by contrast, flexes very little. In fact, it's one of the most rigid keyboards I own, and it doesn't make any creaking noises either. 
There is no badge. Where the oval badge used to go is a rectangular shape with nothing on it. Instead, they stuck the Unicomp logo on the Locklight sticker, which overall is almost impossibly ugly. And also, it doesn't fit properly in the recess. It sticks out on this side. I think they also offer a matte black sticker option and you'd best go for that one because this standard one is repulsive enough to cause eye cancer, I wager. The cable is fixed and non-coiled like on late IBM Mate M's in contrast to the earlier models which use these detachable coiled SDL cables instead. The earliest ones had an AT plug instead of a PS2 one and they were black and shiny rather than matte and grey. Those are really beautiful and somehow they don't appear to get dirty as easily. Maybe it's a different type of plastic. Although all these Model M's use buckling springs based around exactly the same mechanism using exactly the same parts, with the build changing so much over the years, you might be wondering if the key feel is impacted as well. The answer to this is a little bit complicated. From my experience with Model M's, I'd say the key feel is pretty much the same as those of most late IBM made models. If anything changed, it's not that significant. It does feel a little bit different from the 1985 model, which feels a little bit lighter and crisper. It also gives way a bit more after the tactile bump as well. The difference isn't huge, but it's definitely there. The sound has also changed over the years, quite dramatically in fact. It's gotten louder and more high-pitched. So let me quickly compare the Unicomp and the 1985 model for you here, side by side. That said, the key feel in the Unicomp is solid. It feels like a proper Model M, no question about it. The keycaps are different too. They're thick, die-sublimed PBT, just like on the originals, made by the same tools. The caps on Model Ms are of outstanding quality, no question about it. The thickness of the caps has remained the same throughout the years, so these are just as thick as the ones on the 1985 model. The ones on this particular keyboard have a grey colouring scheme instead of white, but you get the idea. Originally, the Model M had two parts detachable keycaps, as well as wire stabilisers on the large keys. But over time, they went for rod stabilisers instead, and Unicomp also lost the two part keycaps. In any case, they might have used the same tooling for the keycaps, but some people have reported that the quality of the lettering on their Unicomp keyboards isn't quite as good as that on their earlier Model M's, particularly with regards to positioning, which is a bit off on some keys. Maybe the tooling is wearing out or something. The keys around the NAV clusters, such as Delete, Insert, and print screen seem especially affected by this, but all the alphanumeric keycaps seem to be fine, or maybe it just doesn't show very well on those, I don't know. People have also reported that the lettering is a bit more fuzzy and not as sharp, but on this keyboard at least, that doesn't seem to be the case. Here's the Q key compared to that from a board from 1987, and although the grey colour doesn't really help, frankly I can't tell the difference if I look really well. This Unicomp is from 2009, so it's already a few years old, but it's still 22 years younger than the other one. By that time, we should have seen a difference, surely. The 1985 one has much thicker legends on the alpha keys, and only the alpha keys, by the way. Here, the Unicomp actually looks sharper. The other keys are roughly equal between the 1985 model and the Unicomp, though. Now, so far, the Unicomp has proven equal to the IBMs in some respects, and inferior in others. That said, these Unicomps do have quite a few advantages that the old IBMs don't have. First of all, of course, you can still buy them, brand new, from Unicomp's website. This model, the Classic, goes for $84, but they also have one that's slightly smaller and lighter, and they have one with a built-in trackball, which is basically a modern version of the old M52, and even one in the shape of the old 122 key terminal keyboards. You can find IBM made Model M's on eBay for varying prices and in various conditions, but they might be dirty or missing a cable and 
they're almost certainly second-hand. Finding a brand new IBM-made Model M is fairly tough. These ones can be ordered in half a minute. Second, it has a USB plug. IBM ones have PS2 plugs, which many computers nowadays, especially cheap ones you find in most offices, don't support. Worse, you need more than just a simple passive adapter to get them to work on modern computers. You need a special active converter, which look exactly the same as many passive adapters on the market to confuse things further. Third, it comes with Windows keys and a menu key like modern keyboards. IBM's and even Lexmark's M's never came with those. Fourth, you get way more customizability. Although Unicom's website is kind of awful, you can adjust your order much more than might appear at first sight, including white or black keyboards of varying sizes. This one, the black model, comes with grey keycaps, which looks pretty slick in fact if you ask me. And Unicom can do other special requests, including blank or coloured keycaps, and with custom legends or different layouts, including ISO, Dvorak, etc. All in all, these Unicoms have their pros and their cons. They're lighter and not as tough as proper old IBM steel, and the sound isn't as good as a consequence, but the key feels solid and it's still a genuine Model M. Moreover, you can customise your order much more, you have a one-year warranty, and it's immediately usable and, of course, new. It's a little bit like buying a new car versus an old second-hand car. Sure, there's nothing that holds up to an E-Type Jaguar on the market right now, but new car smell, picking your own colour, and the lack of carburettors also have their advantages. For the real enthusiast, probably nothing short of a square-badged true blue IBM 80s Model M will do, but for everyone else, a Unicomp should be more than sufficient. It's still a great keyboard. That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.